Girl, that sounds like me. That sounds like exactly how I was. How do you guys budget as a young married couple? I looked at what really defines a godly man. Reading before bed helps me fall asleep. Really having your priorities together and aligned. I have been in that situation before. You guys really should be able to have like healthy conversations around it. How do I let go of control and trust him? Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be different than anything I've ever done and honestly, I'm really excited for it. It's gonna be more of a chit chatty kind of video. I'm gonna be giving you my best advice. I asked you guys on my Instagram to submit your anonymous questions, situations, anything that you wanted advice on. And let me tell you, you guys delivered. I have hundreds and hundreds of responses and it's the kind of responses I was hoping for. So I'm essentially gonna read the situation you guys are in or whatever you're needing help on and I'll just give you my best advice. You guys were all over this and you were really excited about it. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments if you want me to do more stuff like this. I was going through a few of them with Sam and I was like, wait, I wish he was here to like answer some of these with me. So I think that would be a really fun thing to do, like an advice column with my husband. I just think it would be super fun. So I'm sure this is going to be a long video. So grab a drink, grab a snack, cozy up. I'm in one of my favorite chairs. I've got a cozy blanket. I've got a drink and my drink of choice is an iced latte that I made at home. So go grab yourself a snack, a drink, and let's hang out for a little bit. Someone wrote in, I'm dating this guy that I've known for a while. We've always worked so well together up until recently. What started the recent struggle between us is that I'm becoming so much stronger in my faith and God is revealing things to me that didn't seem important before now. He isn't as strong in his faith as I am and I often notice things that are not very godly. And yes, everyone sins and makes mistakes, but because I'm growing so much, these things have been way more obvious. When we talk about some biblical things, I can tell that he's more curious than he has been before. So God is definitely using me to inspire him. I've been praying about it and I just can't figure out if I'm waiting around for potential or if God wants me to be the one with him for the long run. I don't want him out of my life, especially because I know that I can encourage him to grow in his faith so much, but it also begs the question of how much I'm being poured into. Anyways, sorry for giving you almost the entire story, but if you have any advice, I'd love to hear it. Thank you, Jacqueline. I actually can relate to this. I have been in that situation before in a previous relationship, and so I sympathize with you and empathize with you so much. It is so hard to see so much potential in someone, but then at the same time see some signs from them that maybe you don't want in your future spouse. And it's hard because you you believe in that person and you don't know, is God gonna use you in their life or whatever? I think now being married for three years, you wanna be married to someone that you can put your full trust in. And not to say, like you said, everybody makes mistakes. It's not to say that this person can't sin or whatever. We all sin, we all fall short, but there's another degree of which, like, especially as a woman, you want to be able to fully trust your husband for the future and think about it. Like, is this the kind of guy that you want to raise your kids with? Is this the kind of guy that whenever your kid goes to their dad to ask them a really hard question that you're gonna trust that he's going to answer it well and steward them well? Um, and it's not to say that that this person wouldn't make a good father, but is it the kind of father that you want? Especially biblically speaking, like if he can lead your family, in my opinion, I think it's not worth it. Like from my own personal experience, I know how hard it is to break up with someone because you feel like they're not where you want them to be. And it's hard because you've built this relationship with them and people in your life like them or, and you've just become like really accustomed to that pattern in your life, right? You're comfortable, but trust me now being on the other side of that, going through that breakup and finding someone who from day one, I was confident in, I think is really important. And I just wish I could go back and tell younger Jacqueline, girl, like, break up with him. Because I was honestly just worried I wouldn't find anybody else. Also, it's different because you do really care about that person. It's not like you're just stringing them along and it is hard to separate that. But in my opinion, 
it's just better to marry someone that you're confident in. He shouldn't need you to have a good relationship with God. That's not healthy because whenever it comes time of where you're used to each other, you're comfortable and you're not showing and like putting your best foot forward, he might not show as much interest because naturally whenever we're dating people, we want to be the best version of ourselves. It's not out of a heart to be deceiving, for some it is, but that's just naturally what happens. So what's gonna happen 10 years down the road when he no longer cares about impressing you? Is he going to desire to love the Lord? Maybe not, because if he was doing it out of motivation for you rather than out of love for the Lord, it's probably not sustainable if that makes sense. So that's a really hard situation to be in and I've been in that situation, but trust me, it is worth the heartbreak to find something better. Okay, this question says, I'm 27 and going to be 28 this year and married to my husband for two years. We have a house, not our dream home, but still a house we own. I'm feeling ready for kids and he does not want any for at least five years. His perspective on kids has changed since we got married and I worry he won't want any. I don't want to be in my 30s having kids. How does Sam feel about kids when you bring it up or have baby fever? He wants us to have our dream house before we have kids, but I might be closer to 40 by the time we can save enough for that. Ooh, that's a really difficult situation. Obviously, I don't know much about you. I don't know your belief system or you know what you guys think about family. You guys have different priorities, right? His priority is probably to have all these comforts in place before getting uncomfortable, like having kids or whatever, which I can understand and I do feel like the world and just like our culture in general is getting married later, having kids later. Like it's this idea of you've got to have your dream job established your dream everything fulfilled before you have kids which obviously I've never had kids so I can't speak from experience but I think at the same time I think we look at children like they're life ending things like once you have kids forget everything forget saving money forget you know having any fun forget your marriage being good and I don't feel like that's true I think that you guys really should be able to have like healthy conversations around it even if you disagree and I get like whenever me and Sam disagree on something it does feel very divisive especially if it's something really big there have been times that me and Sam have been on different pages like I've felt you know there's been times where I'm like I think I'm ready and he hasn't felt that or he's felt it and I'm like I don't know and for us since we are believers like our big thing is like we want to pray and truly find God's timing not our own and so we're doing our best to always die to our own plan our own desires and see what the lord has for us in that and so i don't know if you guys are believers i think you should realistically ask him like do you because you're saying you're fearing that he doesn't want kids i think you should be honest with him and let him know like from the way things are going i'm fearing that you're getting down the road of not wanting kids is that something that's true if so why like get down to the root of his concern there is he afraid his freedoms are going to be taken away or does he have some deeper fears that that maybe he's not talking about like maybe he doesn't feel equipped enough or capable or like maybe he feels insecure about being a parent so i think really getting down to the root and to the why of why he's feeling that i think is really important it can also help you better understand where he's coming from that's a really tough situation and i think ultimately the goal should be to get on the same page where neither of you feel like you're compromising um but rather you come to a conclusion that you both like and feel good about that's really hard and i'm sorry that you're going through that someone wrote in i'm getting married soon and i'm so excited however i seem to be struggling with the idea of submitting and letting go of control when it comes to following my future husband i know i'm not in that role yet but how do i know and tell when he's steamrolling me or when he's just trying to shift my perspective and have me follow and trust him we had an instance where i saw it as him just trying to control me and he saw it as him trying to lead any advice on how I can make this a bit of an easier transition? Okay, I'm gonna address the whole idea of like, how do I let go of control and trust him? I relate to this. I really struggle letting up of control and trusting other people with like my own well being. But I've learned over the past few years that I am, whenever I struggle to trust Sam as the leader of our family, I've realized it's come from a root of really not trusting him 
period, like as an individual and not trusting that he is looking out for my best interest. And so that can come from two things. One, it could come from me not believing the best in my husband, or it can also come from me not feeling like he is prioritizing my well-being and caring for me. And so I feel like this is twofold. One, I mean, if you're marrying him, I would think obviously you trust him and you love him and you love his character. So it's very helpful to just believe the best in your spouse. If he's making a decision, trusting that he is making a decision that is best for you and your family rather than doubting him or whatever. But on the flip side for him, he also needs to demonstrate and communicate how he is caring for you, especially in the beginning because I feel like there's a lot of ambiguity. So it's really helpful to name Things. Like if he is making a decision, maybe whenever he was trying to lead for him to communicate better with you and to say, hey, I think that we should do this because I think this is what's best for you. And this is why I want you to know I really care about how you feel. I care about your opinion. I care about these things. And then on the flip side, if he doesn't communicate that to still believe the best in him, that that is his intention. Really focusing on what you're fixing your thoughts on, especially about your spouse. So I hope that helps. My husband and I have been married for almost a year. His family raised him to believe that the wife is solely responsible for doing the husband's laundry, dishes, house stuff, etc. While he doesn't agree with this, he never learned how to clean anything. Even though we both work full-time jobs, he doesn't help me around the house. I have tried to communicate to him that I really need help, but he always brushes me off and says he doesn't know how to clean anything the way I want. Did you and Sam have any issues regarding household chores? How can I approach him in a godly manner without nagging him about cleaning? So my situation is flipped. I grew up only seeing my mom do this stuff, do all the household chores, and not like my dad worked and my mom just did the household stuff. She also worked part-time at some points too. So I saw a more traditional marriage. So whenever I got married, I was like, that's what I need to do. I need to do everything. Sam did not grow up in a household like that. I feel like he grew up in a more balanced household maybe. I don't know. In the beginning of our marriage, he would do the laundry. And I remember feeling like I have failed. I did not get to laundry quick enough. He needed it done. So he just did it himself. And he was like, no big deal. I just did the laundry. So he knew how to fully clean and everything because he lived on his own before we got married. I think maybe you guys just make a fun day of it. Don't make it into a heavy thing or anything, but maybe you just spend a Saturday and teach him how to clean or teach him how to do things like the laundry or how to load the dishwasher or whatever. I think it's important to not make things so serious. I say it in air quotes because for example, an ongoing thing that me and Sam have in our marriage is that I'm really bad at loading the dishwasher properly in the way that he would want it. And so he can get on to me about it and we can laugh about it. And I know he's serious. I know that he's a little frustrated, but we laugh it off, right? And I do take it to heart, like, okay, I need to be better about doing it the way that he would like it. And the way that it does make more sense, it's not as messy, whatever. I feel like it is the right way. But we don't make it into a thing, right? He just tells me we laugh it off and I try. So maybe you can approach it in that way, but then at the same time, if he's brushing you off over and over, I think it is helpful to communicate that that's hurtful um, and that maybe you guys need to like make a list of what would be helpful and to have set like chores. This is my domain, this is his domain. That might be helpful to make communication more clear and it might sound silly or dumb, but it might just help habits get created, you know what I mean? So maybe you guys like, you do the laundry, he does the dishes, you cook, he takes out the trash. I don't know. I don't know if that's balanced, but you get what I'm saying. That way there's no excuses. There's no, well, I didn't do it because it's not how you would want it done. It's no, you need to do it because this is what you need to do and he'll learn. And same for you. I think it will help you not feel so naggy because he knows what the expectations are. It's just really helpful to set clear expectations. So I hope that helps. Okay, I'm getting married very soon. I'm super excited about it, but I'm really starting to dread the wedding night. I have expressed that fear to my fiance, but I think it's hard for him to understand the way I feel. Do you have any recommendations on how I can feel more comfortable? I trust my fiance. I'm not worried about him making me feel uncomfortable, but I'm a chronic overthinker and just worried that I will overthink so much that I will be unable to enjoy the night. Girl, that sounds like me. That sounds like exactly how I was. I 
I was so stressed about it. Like I was so worried about it. And I don't know, it wasn't even worried about Sam, like my husband necessarily. It was just like, oh, it's just such an unknown thing. And I totally feel you, I get it. So it sounds like you guys communicate, which is really good. I was gonna say the first thing that's so important is just to have conversations. Talk about your fears, talk about what you're worried about exactly. Um, and I mean exactly, like get down to the details. And I totally get it, but just trust me, it is way better than you think it is. It is fun. It's okay to laugh about it. Like it's not at all what I expected. I expected it to be like a serious thing, a super romantic thing. And it was, don't get me wrong. It was romantic. It was truly one of my favorite nights of my life, which I honestly never thought. Like I did not think it would be that. It was just so special. And I think what made it special was how Sam approached it. And I felt so cared for and loved and seen. And it was just the most beautiful moment. And maybe you can let him know, hey, it would mean a lot to me. Like I'm afraid I'm going to be anxious so can you help set the mood can you help me in that moment feel so relaxed and sometimes guys like being told exactly what you want and if you know exactly what you want then communicate that to him but maybe he wants to be able to create that environment for you without you telling him exactly what you need and I think once me and Sam had those extensive conversations it made me feel better and he just really assured me like Jacqueline I've got this like I am going to focus like your focus has been on the wedding and Sam was like I'll focus on the wedding night and he truly did that he made me feel so comfortable and so if he has guy friends that have been married before that you guys respect maybe that would be a great thing he could talk to them and see what they wish they did what was not the right move or what worked really well yeah so also don't feel like upset at yourself for feeling that it's very normal at least I felt that, so you're not alone. Wow, a lot of these are having a very similar theme. It says, hi, me and my husband are a young married couple who save sex for marriage. Since we got married, I feel like sex has been somewhat of a struggle for us in some ways. It has been hard because I feel like most people make it seem like it comes so naturally, but that has not really been the case for us. Is this something you've experienced? If so, what advice would you have for someone struggling in this area? Yes, and this is so normal. Like, yes, sex is natural, but it takes time time to learn each other, to learn what you like, what you don't like, to learn what your husband likes, what he doesn't like. And it takes time and that is okay. The movies, Hollywood has made it seem like it's just easy and you get it right off the bat. And even people, I would get so annoyed when someone would say, oh, you guys are in the honeymoon phase, like wink, wink. I'd be like, uh, yeah, like you have no idea how hard this is. And I thought I was so alone and then finally, I was like, I gotta talk to people. So I finally like opened up to my friends and they were like, oh my goodness, me too. Like you are not alone. We're three years in and I feel like we're kind of getting the hang of things, but I know year 10, I'm gonna look back and be like, we had no idea what we were doing. And that's okay because you have the rest of your lives to figure it out. And that's kind of the fun part. That's the safe part about marriage. And it's completely normal. My tips would be to keep it light and keep it fun and not look at it so seriously. Like in the beginning, I was so serious. I felt like, I felt like you can't laugh during sex. And it's like, that is, the best whenever you can be so carefree is whenever it's the best and so find ways to make it fun spice it up um don't be afraid to throw some lingerie in there to try out some new things and keep it light and you can communicate that and you can communicate it in a fun way um and be yourself don't feel like you have to put on this like you know super sexy actor face like I think a confident woman is the most attractive thing. And so just be like confident in yourself and not in like your capabilities. That's not what I mean because like you're just married. You don't know what you're doing, but just confidence in that you don't know what you're doing is probably really attractive if that makes sense. So you're not alone. It's normal. How do I get on a normal sleep schedule? I feel like I can't fall asleep even though my body is tired and I feel like my body won't let me sleep. Any help? Funny that you say that because I actually struggled with this for a while and it was really hard for me for probably like a six month period to fall asleep and it was miserable. It felt like it was ruling my life because I was not getting good sleep. I was anxious to go to bed because I feel like, I felt like that's whenever all my worst thoughts would come in. That's why I couldn't fall asleep. I was just kind of like, I was just really struggling. So I think what's important is to create a 
like night routine that is good for you. So I figured out that reading before bed helps me fall asleep. It makes me so tired. And so what I would do, and I found that being on my phone would not make me tired. So whenever it was like coming near bedtime, probably an hour, an hour and a half before bed, I would not be on my phone. I wouldn't get on Instagram. I wouldn't do anything that would kind of like set off those like dopamine things that we get from social media or watching a YouTube video or something like that. So I would not be on my phone and then I would read before bed and I would get cozy, get all comfortable to where I'm reading until I can't keep my eyes open anymore and that changed the game for me. Also, if I find that I'm a little on edge, I'll take a bath or just do something that is very relaxing for me and kind of shuts my brain off because my brain can overthink. So that's my best advice is to read before bed. And I am I read fiction books before bed, not necessarily like, you know, a thought provoking book in any way. Um, that just helps me. And if you don't like reading, I promise you've just not found the best books for you. Try different books. If you want specific book recommendations, ask in the comments and I'll reply with some recs down below. Okay. Were there any disagreements or issues that came up while you and Sam were dating that made you question if God wanted you to be together and get married? If so, what were they and how did you overcome that? Okay, that's a really good question. Yes, I remember there was a time we had been dating around a year and I started questioning a lot of things. I was just overthinking everything. And so whenever I was going through this, I remember just overthinking and wondering, how do I know if I'm supposed to marry him? Like, cause obviously nobody's perfect. You know, it's not like he had given me some information that changed everything. It was nothing like that. It wasn't like super specific, but I was just kind of questioning it. And so how I overcame that was I went to the word and I looked at what really defines a godly man. And specifically an easy place to go to that is like to go to like the elder qualifications. I think it's in Timothy maybe. It talks about like, the reason I say elder qualifications is because hopefully your husband is aspiring to be a godly man. And so the elder of the church are generally really godly men and so the qualifications of an elder are probably going to make really good qualifications for a spouse that was kind of my deductive reasoning there and so i went there and i read it and was sam perfect in every single one no but did i know that he was striving to become that yes and i knew that he was putting his hope in christ and i Put my hope in that and trusted that that would make him a good spouse and so i think that really helped my discernment and i also went to people that knew sam and asked if they were seeing what i saw meaning if they also believed that he was you know a man of good character and everybody did and so that gave me a lot of peace because obviously i'm biased i loved him you know i i had feelings for him and you can easily be blinded by that so it gave me a lot of peace knowing not only i but the people in my life saw the good qualities that he had and also another thing that was a really good indicator to me was that when he fell short how he handled it because everybody falls short we're not perfect we're not great like I sometimes can be the worst person but I think when he would fall short how he would apologize or even put his pride down and humble himself was a really good green flag to me this person says I'm newly married and my husband and I are thriving good for you any suggestions on creating space between our parents they are so supportive but we want to be independent yeah so I get that and I think it's important to just communicate with them it sounds like they're not you know like hovering over you or anything you know if they're reasonable you should be able to have a conversation with them and say hey we love you guys so much but as we're navigating becoming our own family these are kind of our hopes and expectations and sometimes it takes time like it just takes like you're transitioning from your priority being your family to now being your spouse right unless you you know lived on your own for a while or whatever um and that takes time thankfully like for me i was kind of i don't want to say forced but like i literally moved away from my family so naturally there was a lot of space between us and it just kind of became that um, and it did help me and Sam like truly form our own family. I think just being super clear about your intentions and your expectations is the best thing that you can do. And by that I mean, 
you know, really emphasizing to them that you're not trying to create distance. You're not, you know, trying to get away. You don't want to forget them. It's really just so that you can grow your marriage and your relationship and really navigate this new time of becoming your own family. And I hope that they'll be understanding. Most people are, um, and they probably get it. They were newly married. Now it is difficult if they got married and their family was very involved or whatever. Um, and if that was the case, then you can just clearly communicate. That's not how you want to do things. This is what you expect. And the reason that you want this is to better preserve your relationship with them and that you're doing it and you're communicating this not because you want to lay down rules and be defiant, but rather so that you can, you know, so they can know what you would like to better preserve everybody's relationship with everybody. Okay, somebody said, what are your thoughts on Christian dating apps? I'm looking for a future husband, but I don't know if it's where the Lord wants me to meet him. Dating apps are difficult because when I was dating, it was not as common. Whereas like now I feel like it's dating apps are super common. And I mean among Christians, right? It was common, but like not among Christians. And listen, I, we have friends that met on not even Christian dating apps and we love them. They are godly people and it worked out for them. Personally, I'm just apprehensive towards it. I mean, obviously I'm not dating, but I just feel like I would feel so nervous to like be talking with somebody online and then going on a date. I don't know. Like that just, I mean, that is kind of what me and Sam did. It was different though, because I knew him outside of that. It just seems weird to me to like meet a stranger for the first time through a dating app, but not to say, I don't necessarily think it's wrong. I just feel like it is going off of your looks and what you create your profile to be. And you know, you can kind of manipulate that to be anything you want. So I would definitely have some guards up with it. So I really just think it's up to your discretion. Okay, this is a great question. It says, how do you handle spice and books from a Christian perspective? Getting back into reading and really surprised at the amount of explicit content in a lot of the popular books. I get that. I was in the same boat. I wish that they had like a, a rating on books the same way they do on movies so you can know what content's in there because it's really hard to find. Goodreads has been great for that because people will like kind of give a rating on there. You kind of like read reviews. You can also look up like the parents guide for the book, but not all books have them. So I've just found one, like if a friend recommends a book, I can ask them, hey, does this have any explicit content in it? I don't like to read books with any, you know, sexual content or even strong language and they can let you know. It's really hard and I don't really have much help other than like, if you know someone that's read the book, you can ask them. Some Christian fiction's really good. I'm not gonna lie. Um, and also a good tip is to stick to young adult because I think that they can't put a certain amount of like explicit content in there. There's still some stuff, but it's closed door usually, which I appreciate. You can also look up trigger warnings or you can just search like closed door romance and then you should be good to go. Okay. How do you guys budget as a young married couple? Also, how do you deal with finances and still tithing even with inflation? This economy. I think one, really having your priorities together and aligned is really important. The way me and Sam spent money was very different. I was the more spendy one if I wanted it. I would get it. Me and Sam both had very different spending lifestyles and so we had to come together and find a good healthy mix of the both of ours and really find what would honor the Lord, what we were both okay with. And I really think just having clear conversations about it. I mean, my biggest tip to you is do not spend money that you don't have. Like that, I think it's become a thing where because of credit cards, I think people just put money on a credit card and just spend it. And that's very dangerous. I think we've gotten really comfortable with debt as a society. And so that's my biggest tip is to only spend money that you have. I would also say, I think you absolutely should still tithe. The Bible's pretty clear about giving of our money, but really it's more of a heart issue. So I, I, I would hate to tell you, you should tithe and then you just do it because you should do it. It's really more of having the mindset of that. This is the money that the Lord has given you to steward. And the first step is to have the faith to give it back to him because you know, it's a symbol of like, Lord, I trust that you will provide despite this economy, despite the inflation, despite whatever enter your service 
circumstances here. I think that's why it's really important to tithe. God doesn't really need our money, so to say. It's more because it's a heart check for us. Okay, that is it for today's advice video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you did, and let me know if you guys want another video like this or one with Sam I think could be really, really fun. I hope it was cozy. I hope you had a good time. Be sure to subscribe below if you're not already, and I'll see you guys on my next video. Bye.